move over, man. You have never protected and provided. It's never been like that in the past. It's not like that in the present. And it will never be like that in the future. Move over, man. Women hunted too. We're hunters. Well, he's a hunter. I'm a, I'm a maker. A maker? I made this loincloth. I uh, make arrows. I, I've uh, made a shelf unit for my hut. We're going to have a look at this absolutely insane article from the New York Times. It's absolutely fascinating. It's, it's crazy. We're going to read through it together and we're going to comment on it because I think this is telling of how the modern leftist agenda wants to rewrite history in every sense possible. So it's just insane. This is the neighborhood and you are not welcome. That's why I need to be here. <laughs> Anthropologists are finding that women in modern foraging societies have played a major role in catching game. This is not to take away from women that historically have actually been alongside men. Hunting, fighting, makes me think about the Viking women who were shield maidens, they were warriors, they probably did some hunting as well. But that's a very, very rare occasion where women actually hunted or fought alongside men. That is not what happened throughout history. While it might be true that some women might have hunted in the past, I really, really doubt that, that it was the majority of women. So this, as we're going to read together, this article is trying to tell you that women were not the gatherers. Women were the hunters. It's just, it's crazy, but let's read through it together. It's often viewed as a given. Men hunted, women gathered. After all, the anthropological reasoning went Men were naturally more aggressive, whereas the slower pace of gathering was ideal for women, who were mainly focused on caretaking. Do you see the subtle way it differentiates between men and women? It says men were naturally, naturally more aggressive. It doesn't say men were naturally stronger. Do you see the difference there? It says aggressive, already a negative, a negative connotation to depict men. It's not saying men were stronger, it's saying men were aggressive, a negative connotation. But let's carry on. It's not something I questioned, said Sophia Chilsuk, a recent graduate of Seattle Pacific University, where she studied applied human biology. And I think the majority of the public has that assumption. Well, it's a right assumption. At times, the notion has proved stronger than the evidence at hand. In 1963, archaeologists in Colorado unearthed the nearly 10,000-year-old remains of a woman who had been buried with a projectile point. They concluded that the tool had been used not for killing game, but unconventionally as a scrapping knife. But the male-centric you see another connotation here? It's saying male-centric. So the hunters of the past were male-centric and they were oppressing women when they made them stay at the hut gathering strawberries while they risked their lives hunting buffaloes. You see, that was male-centric. That was oppressive for women, of course, because the hunters of the past should have quotas so that 50% of the women in the village should go out hunting. It's just insanity. But the male-centric narrative has been slowly changing. On the first day of a college anthropology course, Miss Chilsnack, Chilsack, whatever, and her classmates listened to a podcast about the landmark discovery of a female hunter during an excavation in Peru in 2018. Among fragments of cranium, teeth, and leg bones, archaeologists found a hunting kit with more tools. Projectile points, flakes, scrapers, choppers, and burnishing stones. This discovery led the team to review the findings from other burials in the early Americas. In 2020, they concluded that the big game hunting between 14,000 and 8,000 years ago was gender neutral. Well, he's a hunter. I'm a, I'm a maker. A maker? Who wrote this nonsense? Like, those anthropologists, or anthropologists, quote-unquote, do, do they really believe that hunters of the past were gender neutral? Well, I mean, maybe one woman out of 100,000 sometimes went hunting, but I don't think that that was the norm. And you just have to read a bit of history to figure that out. 
Abigail Anderson, a psychology student who was also in the class, was shocked. Wait, is this true? She remembered thinking. On reading the study, Miss Anderson was struck by the author's references to the scholarly reluctance to associate women with hunting materials. Immediately, I was like, is this bias or is this accurate? She said, of course, hunters of the past were a male-centric, biased, patriarchal, misogynistic assholes who didn't let women hunt, you see. They were oppressing women by not letting them hunt. By making women stay in the hut picking up strawberries and lettuce, they were oppressing them, you see. They should have let them be killed while hunting, to walk for days and be killed when a buffalo strikes them. They were really oppressing women. Miss Chilsuck and Miss Anderson joined Kara Wall Scheffler, a biological anthropologist who taught their course, and two other researchers, also women figures, to figure this out. Now the team has published a literal. Oh my days. I cannot read. Now the team has published a literature review in PLOS, one concluding that most modern foraging societies, women have played a dominant role in bringing home the game. Okay. Tales of female hunters existed, Dr. Wall Scheffler noted, but compiling and showing that it's not an anecdote, it's a pattern. What's what we were trying to do with this paper? To investigate, the team combed through the database of places, languages, culture, and environment, a catalogue of ethnographies about human societies in the 19th and 20th centuries, and found 60, 63 foraging societies with first-hand reports on when, how, and what hunting occurred. Then the team sought out patterns, whether women were hunting at all, whether the activity was intentional or opportunistic, and the size of the game being pursued. Dr. Wall Scheifer and her students found evidence of women hunting in 50 of the 63 societies they studied. Moreover, 87% of that behavior was deliberate. In cultures where hunting was the most important means of finding food, women took an active role 100% of the time. I, I don't know where, I don't know. this. This left ideology of feminism trying to beat men in everything they do or beat men out of their game or compete in the same areas of dominance as men makes, makes completely no sense to me. Women can do anything. Well, I mean, just because they can doesn't mean they should, right? <laughs> it would make sense in the past that men were out hunting killing game, bring it to the village, and women were the ones gathering. It just makes perfect sense because let's think about it logically from an evolutionary biology, whatever, bro science sense. Let's just think about it. Women are the ones that give birth to the next generation of the village. Men throughout history have always been expendable. It didn't matter if men died in the past. But it was really important that women didn't die, because if the women died, there would be no next generation in the village. If the women are gone, if a woman, let's say if a woman dies hunting, that woman will now not be able to give birth to the next generation of the village. So it would make perfect sense, even if, I'm not saying women couldn't hunt, I'm sure women could hunt, but it would make sense that they didn't because we didn't want them to die hunting. You had maybe to walk for days to find game and kill it and then walk for days back to your village. It was dangerous to be out outside walking for days in the weather. You could die hunting. There was a million ways that you could die hunting. On the way to hunt, hunting on the way back, you could encounter men from another village that could fight and, and, and kill some of your, the members of your tribe, it would make perfect sense for the women to stay in the village. I'm not saying women couldn't hunt. I'm just saying it would make perfect sense for the men and for the women to want to stay in the village 
so they would be more protected. Let's just carry on. The researchers also found that women were more flexible. Here it is, here it comes. Women are better than men at almost everything they do. The research. Da, 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 da. The researchers also found that women were more flexible in their approaches to hunting as they aged. This is insane. Which weapons they chose, the game they chased, and who accompanied them during hunts changed with age and the number of children or grandchildren that the hunters had. Of course, the more children they had, and the more they had to be mothers or grandmothers and take care of the tribe, the more they wanted to go hunting. It's like that in the modern age. The more children women have today, as soon as they have children, the more they want to work. The, the gender pay gap, it gets less and less and less wide as women have children because they want to work more, you see, for those children. It's not that they have children and they work less and less. That's why a gender, gap a gender pay gap exists. It's because we live in a patriarchal, misogynistic world. Let's just carry on. They have different strategies but they're still always going out as they age. Dr. Wall Schaefer said, often the oldest women participated the most. Yeah, sure, an 80 year old grandma was out there walking for days with a bow, with a spear, and yeah, it was, it's usually what grandmothers did. In one bow and arrow culture, for example, a grandmother was prized for having the best aim. The details about female hunting patterns were not easy to uncover, Ms. Schilsnack said. The reports often prioritize discussion of the male hunters. But the findings, when they emerged, made a certain sense, she added. If hunting was the chief means of survival, why would only men participate? Because women's lives are more valuable than men's lives? Because women give birth to the next generation? Because it would make sense to protect women so that the village would have a next generation. I don't know, that's just a few. I'm sure we could find more. Women are less strong than men. Women are maybe less built to walk for days, to hunt. I mean, that's just a few of the reasons that I can come up with now on the fly. But I'm sure she has very good reasons, reasons why they did hunt. The researchers wondered, what other stories have been overlooked by ethnographers, by the misogynist, patriarchal, male-centric men who didn't let women hunt. Let's carry on. There might be so many things that we're missing out on, Miss Chilstack said. Yes, of course, women obviously were the soldiers that made the armies of the past. It was a 50-50 thing. They had, the Roman Empire had quotes so that women would participate in the army in the same proportion as men. What other things are we missing out on? It's a natural thing to have assumptions, but it's our responsibility to change those assumptions to better understand our world. And what she means there is, it's our responsibility to rewrite the past to fit our modern narratives so that we can have a story that makes sense in our rose-tainted glasses world. But let's carry on. Tammy Buonasera, a biomolecular archaeologist at the University of Alaska Fairbanks who identified the sex of the female hunters found in 2018, welcomed the conclusion of the PLOS paper. I always assumed that women did hunt probably more often than was recognized, she said. In general, she added, women are viewed as just passive actors in history. No one says that women were passive actors in history. I think they were the most important role that anyone could have in history is to make the next generations, to protect the offsprings of the next generation. No one says that that's a passive thing to do. I think it's the most important thing that women could do. And I think even women could see that, but not the feminists of today. They, In their feminist mindset, they cannot fathom that the most important thing that a woman can do is take care of the kids of the next generation. In the feminist worldview, in the modern feminist view of today, they cannot even begin to imagine how a woman would think that taking care of the offsprings and protecting the next generation is the most important thing for any tribe, for any country, for any society. It is the most important thing, but 
modern feminism cannot see that. She noted that the study of plant gathering and, and the innovative ways in which people process plants, a vital source of food, has been neglected because these activities are traditionally linked to women. Randy Haas, an archaeologist at Wayne State University who led the Peruvian excavation, likewise praised the new paper. In light of what my study shows, their findings align with the same narrative. We've had biased interpretations. There we go. We've had the patriarchy, oppressing women, always and forever. And the idea that sexual division of labor is an inherent part of human biology is a trope that has played out in structural inequalities today. You see, here it comes. Let me repeat that one more time. And the idea that sexual division of labor is an inherent part of human biology is a trope that has played out in structural inequalities today. I knew that was I knew this was coming. I knew somewhere they would link the patriarchal world we live in today as a thing that we inherited from the past. It has never been about protecting women. It has never been about providing for women. It has never been that women actually might have in the past see that they were the most important thing to be protected and to be valued in any society in the history of the world. They give birth to the next generation. They have to be protected at all costs. I'm not saying women cannot hunt. I'm not saying that some women might have been incredible hunters, but it's more important to protect the next generation of the tribe. It's more important that we have a next generation, not to have all the women die hunting and in wars. But, uh, oh, Jesus Christ, it... The dawning appreciation for women as hunters comes as anthropology, like many scientific fields, has begun to diversify its ranks, leading scholars to re-examine how evidence is interpreted. Who you are shapes the questions you ask, Dr. Warshoffer said. It shapes the expectations of what you see. She, it's a she, so it might shape the expectations that she wants to see. But let's carry on. She added that, like anyone, anthropologists can be tempted by a single narrative. Complexity is relegated to anecdotes, she said. We just have to be willing to dig a little deeper. For Miss Anderson, it was like taking the blinders off. I don't know when I got this ingrained in me as a child, she said, of the male hunter myth. So now it's a myth. It's this, this article is so full of feminist rhetoric bullshit that it's it's perplexing to read. And then it spiraled like a snowball effect. What else do I think it's true that isn't? So there you go. Males have never been the protectors and the providers in the past. They will never be the protectors and the providers in the present. And God forbid any feminist rose-tainted glasses wants you to think that in the future, males will continue to provide and protect like we always have and like we always will thank you very much for watching guys and like always see you on the next one